Man is not forsaken on earth. He is a child of God, engaged in constructive work, temporarily clothed in flesh. He is a student in a meritorious school where he must learn to raise himself up. The human struggle is his opportunity, his set of tools and his textbook. How childish to imagine that the mere ringing down of the curtain, physical death, would settle transcendental questions of the infinite. One life is but a single act, one body a garment, one century a day, one task an experience, one triumph an acquisition, one death a breath of renovation. How many lives, how many bodies, how many centuries, how many tasks, how many triumphs, how many deaths are still allotted to us. These astounding messages from the spirits, via a human medium, convey the message of spiritism. Spiritism emerged in the mid-19th century through the findings and philosophy of French educator Hippolyte Léon Denizard Réveil, also known by the pen name Alan Kardec. Contemporaries of Alan Kardec included spiritist philosopher Léon Denis and renowned author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. According to the principles of Spiritism, God is the supreme intelligence, eternal and all good. The human soul, while destined for ultimate perfection, must undergo successive incarnations of spiritual progress based on effort. Thus, the Spiritist's goal is to explore the nature, origin and destiny of the soul, often through afterlife communication as conveyed via a human medium. These afterlife insights, including an understanding of the soul's immortality, have been transcribed into spiritist books. One such volume is Norsor Lar, or Astral City, conveyed by spirit André Luiz through spiritist medium Francisco Candido Javier. Francisco Candido Javier was a Brazilian philanthropist who co-authored more than 400 books donating all proceeds to charity. One of his more famous works, Astral City, describes a spiritual society as stated from the afterlife by former medical doctor André Luiz. Astral City describes not only the continuation of life beyond the physical body, but more importantly, how heaven cares for each and every human soul. The following excerpts from Astral City emphasize love as the transformative principle that uplifts all souls in the universe. Chapter 15. My Mother's Visit Following Clarence's advice, I tried hard to restore my strength in order to start my apprenticeship as soon as possible. In the old days, I might have taken offence at the minister's seemingly harsh remarks, but under the circumstances, Recollecting my past errors, I could only feel comforted. As a prisoner of the flesh, the soul is almost always wrapped in thick mists of illusion. Only now did I realize that an earthly life cannot be lived thoughtlessly. The real importance of an incarnation loomed clearly before my eyes. Remembering all the opportunities I had wasted, I recognized that Clarence had plenty of reason to have spoken to me as he had. I spent many days immersed in contemplation. Although I refrained from asking for any more concessions, deep in my heart I longed to visit my earthly home. The benefactors of the Ministry of Assistance had been extremely generous to me and seemed to follow all of my thoughts. Therefore, if they did not spontaneously grant such a wish, it must be because the time had not yet come for it. Thus I held my peace, resigned, though somewhat wistful. Lysias did his best to cheer me up with his lively conversation and encouraging remarks. 
But I was going through that phase of spiritual retreat when a man retires within himself to face his innermost conscience. One day, however, my attendant came into my room and exclaimed, Guess who has come to see you? Lysias' smiling face and sparkling eyes gave him away. My mother, I exclaimed confidently. Stunned with joy, I saw my mother approaching with outstretched arms. My child, my child, come into my arms, my dear one. I cannot describe what happened then. All of a sudden, I felt like the little boy who used to play in the rain, barefoot in the sandy soil of our garden. In that sacred and joyful moment, I held her tenderly in my arms until even our tears blended. I cannot say how long we remained that way, but at last she broke the enchantment. Now, now, my boy, don't give free rein to your emotions. You know that even excessive happiness taxes the heart. You are still weak. Do not waste your energy. Instead of carrying my dear old mother in my arms, as I had done in the last weeks of her passage on earth, it was she who dried my tears and led me to the couch. I sat down beside her and laid my head tenderly on her knees. She stroked my hair gently, recounting precious memories. I felt at that moment that I was the happiest of men. I had the impression of being anchored in the safest of harbours after a hard struggle on the stormy seas. My mother's presence was a great comfort to my heart, and those moments seemed like a blissful dream. Like a little boy looking for comfort in familiar objects, I attentively observed her clothes, a perfect copy of those she used to wear at home. I recognized the dark dress, the blue shawl, the stockings. I gazed at her small head crowned with snow white hair, at the wrinkles on her face, at her invariably sweet and calm expression. Speechless and trembling with joy, I stroked her hands while she, stronger than I, spoke serenely. The Lord never forgets us, my child. We shall never be able to thank him for all his kindness. How long our separation has been, but you mustn't think that I had forgotten you. Sometimes providence parts us temporarily so that we may learn divine love. Feeling that her affection was the same as ever, I began to recall again the sting of old grievances. Oh, how difficult it is to get rid of earthly residues. How heavy is the burden of centuries of imperfections. Clarence had often exhorted me to refrain from lamenting. Lysias, too, had spared me his warnings. Yet now, resting in my mother's arms, all my old wounds seemed to bleed again. I started to bitterly recall my past sufferings, and my tears of joy gave way to those of self-pity. I did not realize then that her visit was not to be taken simply for the gratification of my wins, but as one more blessing from divine mercy. Relapsing into my old habit of making my mother the patient victim of my endless grievances, I now began to painfully recount all my past tribulations. On earth, mothers are often merely slaves in their children's eyes. Very rare are those who realize the value of their mother's devotion before being deprived of it. I had been no exception. My mother listened in silence her face clouded by an expression of indescribable sadness. Holding me tight to her heart, her eyes full of tears, she spoke tenderly. Oh, my son, don't complain. Didn't our generous Clarence give you sound advice on that subject? Let's be thankful to our father for this blessed meeting. Let's never forget we are now in a different school, learning to become true children of God. As a mother on earth, I didn't always succeed in guiding you in the best way. Therefore, I too am working to control my feelings by readjusting my heart. But your tears are stirring my old earthly feelings, 
drawing me back into a path I have already trodden. I should like to believe your complaints justified to set you up as the most virtuous creature in the universe, but it would be out of accordance with the new lessons we are learning. In the world, one might make allowances for such behaviour. Here it is quite impossible. We must consider the Lord before everything else. You aren't the only discarnate man redeeming his errors, nor am I the only mother parted from her loved ones. The merit of our suffering, my son, doesn't lie in the tears it makes us shed, nor in the bleeding wounds it inflicts on us, but in the gateway of light it opens up to us. Tears and wounds are only a blessed means of helping us to purify our soul. After a prolonged pause, during which my conscience addressed me firmly, she resumed. Why not enjoy these fleeting moments in the sunshine of love, instead of wasting them in the shadows of unhappiness? Let's serve, my child, and serve cheerfully, while at the same time constantly rejoicing in the Lord. Change your mental attitude, I beg you. Your confidence in my love and your affection for me bring me sublime happiness. But I can't return to experiences which have passed. We must love each other now with the great and sacred divine love. Those inspiring words awakened me, and I had the impression that my mother's love radiated invigorating fluids which lifted my heart. She gazed at me contentedly, transfigured by a radiant smile and as I rose and respectfully kissed her forehead, it struck me that I had never before seen her so beautiful and so loving. If you don't want to be beaten, imprisoned, mutilated, killed or tortured, then you shouldn't condone such behavior towards anyone, be they human or not. Moby Vegan Gentle viewers, thank you for your company today for Words of Wisdom.